This video will be going through how to do a USA question three. Now, this question is an arrange in order of significance question. Nine marks, that means it's nine minutes long, and you are being asked to rank three factors against something, uh, normally changing lives. So the structure for this is three paragraphs. You need to describe your least significant factor, explain its significance by looking at what it affected, how many people and how long for. Now we go from least to most significant because it's easier to justify it that way round uh, and it just gives your answer more of a natural flow. For your second paragraph, you then describe your second most significant factor, why it's significant, and then crucially for the top bands to talk about why you have ranked it as more significant than factor one. So does it affect more people? Does it affect things for a longer time? And then your final paragraph is your most significant factor. You're going to explain why it's significant and again why is it more significant than the other two. Let's have a go at uh, trying a question all together. So we've got the lives of many Americans in the 1930s and 1940s were changed by developments such as the Great Depression, the Second World War, the Alphabet Age. Arrange the developments in order of their significance in changing the lives of Americans. Explain your choices for nine marks. So the first thing, as always, that we're going to do is apply our bug method. So we need to box the command word, or in this case, our command sentence. So arrange the developments in order of their significance. We're going to underline the key features, which is the Great Depression, the Second World War and the alphabet agencies. And then we're going to glance at the hints, which in this case is just the um, number of marks. So let's start thinking then about context. 1930s, 1940s, you've got the Wall Street crash, where uh, on the 29th of October 1929, the stock market crashes, and that leads to the Great Depression. But that's one of our key factors, so the Great Depression wouldn't count as context, but the Wall Street crash would. You've got the Lasser's Fair policies of Herbert Hoover, where he believed uh, the government shouldn't interfere. You've got the New Deal, which are made up of the alphabet agencies. In terms of World War II, you've got Pearl Harbor and increasing economic prosperity uh, after the war finishes in 1945. Let's go through individually some key facts for each of them, because if we're talking about significance, we need to know what changes, how long for and how much change is there. You've got the Wall Street crash as 24.9 million unemployed at its worst. Suicide and divorce rates increased during the Great Depression and they lost their houses and loads of them ended up living in Hoovervilles. Second World War, you've got Pearl Harbor, the 7th of December 1941, uh, unemployment being reduced to 670,000, there's a better standard of living, 50% uh, of the world's manufactured goods are now from the USA. And then you've got the alphabet agencies, including the CCC, which gives 2 million jobs, the TVA, which gives cheap electricity, you know, there's still 9 million unemployed, by 1939 and it excludes black Americans. So all of that information you will use to assess which is most significant in changing the lives of Americans. Um, again it's up to you how you do it, uh, there's no necessarily right or wrong order but again you need to be thinking about what changes, how much has it changed, who it changes for and how long those changes last. The least significant factor was a part of the New Deal called the Alphabet Agencies. They provided temporary work to help people escape their circumstances. 
some agencies did have more of an impact, such as the TVA which used dams to lower the cost of electricity, allowing factories to remain open longer, employ more people, and sell goods for a lower fee. The New Deal lowered unemployment a lot, providing 6 million jobs between 1933 to 1934. However, this work was mainly for men who were 1825, and was not offered to women or blacks which is why it is the least significant. The second most significant development that changed lives would have been the Great Depression. Life was very good after World War I and in the Roaring Twenties, people had it all. But after the WSC life for everyone changed as they were poor with 24.9 million being unemployed and many lived in Hoovervilles. Never before had Americans suffered like this, and it took 10 years to fix the problem. It is for this reasons that the Great Depression was significant as it forced millions of people's lives to change by losing their jobs, homes and life savings. The most significant factor was the Second World War as this provided the most amount of jobs and created the greatest change. The Second World War changed the lives of many, in both positive and negative ways. Firstly, the role of women changed greatly as they had more freedom to work in munitions factories as men were fighting the war. Unlike the alphabet agencies, the army also gave jobs to many more people, eventually lowering unemployment from 13 million in 1933 to just over 670,000 by 1945, something the alphabet agencies did not do. Coming up next are two practice questions uh, alongside a mark scheme and then some sample answers for you. So feel free to pause the video, have a go at the question, self-mark it using the mark scheme and then add anything to it using the sample answers. The Brown vs Topeka case is the least significant as there was it was not entirely successful. There was much opposition to the outcome of the case, and the governor of Arkansas refused to desegregate schools, and instead shut them down. However, the Brown vs Topeka case is still significant as it recognized that segregation was unconstitutional and unlike the Plessy case, succeeded in stopping segregation. It also introduced Thurgood Marshall who was one of the first black Supreme Court judges. Civil rights legislation is significant because it showed the black people that the government was willing to take steps to create a fairer society. The Civil Rights Act and Voting Rights Act gave black people the right to vote, as well as set out laws to make society more fair for blacks, such as employment law and penalties for racist behavior. Although these acts were not always followed by citizens and did face opposition in Congress, legislation was significant in the struggle for civil rights as it made equal rights for all a law. The Montgomery bus boycott is most significant because it's what kick-started the civil rights movement and encouraged black people to take charge of their own lives and unite against racism. Throughout the 1930s and 1940s, Blacks experienced harsh lives and many lived in poverty due to their treatment in society. The boycott began in 1955 when Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat and was arrested. This allowed the black community to protest this treatment and refuse to use public transit which lasted just over one year, and forced the bus company to recognize the importance of black citizens. It is also significant as this is where Martin Luther King first emerged as an influential civil rights leader in the NAACP. Youth and student movement is the least significant factor in influencing foreign policy as it did not have very much impact. For example, when the USA was at war with Vietnam teenagers and the younger generation protested to stop as innocent civilians in Vietnam and their homes were getting bombed. The government did not take them seriously so tried to scare them away by arresting them. This still did not work so they started injuring the younger generation. 
the youth and student movement had more of an impact on social changes, such as protesting for equal rights for blacks as well as changes in music, clothing and literature with the hippie movement in the 1970s. Warfare is the second most significant factor in influencing the USA's foreign policy as it meant helping other countries. For example, they gave weapons to other countries, allies, to support them during the war under the Lend-Lease Agreement. America did this to keep good relations with their allies and to also show off their power and wealth. Also when America was at conflict with Japan. They created policies to forbid the Japanese entering the USA under the 1934 National Origins Act. This would show the power of the USA as other countries would be grateful that they were at good terms with the USA. The threat of communism was the most significant factor in influencing America's foreign policy. Its significance is shown in policies of containment, domino theory, and the Marshall Plan. The USA would do everything in its power to stop communism from spreading, and the domino theory stated if one country became communist, surrounding nations will do the same. Keen to prevent this, the Marshall Plan was made to encourage capitalist businesses, and gave a further $17 billion to Eastern European countries who the USA feared may fall to communism. The constant threat of the Cold War between 1945 to 1989 led to the USA constantly changing and adapting their policies, from isolationism, to containment, Nixon doctrine, detente and Carter doctrine. Also NATO was a treaty that kept all capitalist countries allies and attracted other countries as there was benefits 